Uh, sorry, the last bit, say the last bit again. Never again, two different canons, but they never disagreed with each other on the boat. The Jews, the Israelites. No, no, they disagreed. They disagreed. They, they didn't can't. disagree. Okay. Is it? Would Where? you like to know why they disagree? How they disagree? Okay. Where the evidence? They, when? Okay. Okay. In, in the Roman Empire, most Jews, like today, don't live in Jerusalem, in Israel. I mean. yes. They live in the diaspora, in the great Greek and Roman world. Like today, most Jews barely live in America or Europe. They don't live in Israel. At that time, most Jews used the Septuagint. That's the whole point, this translation that was done. It contained more books than the Palestinian Hebrew original. So, it included Ecclesiasticus, this bigger canon. It included the Book of Wisdom. It okay. included Tobit. It included a whole bunch of stuff written in Greek that's not in the Hebrew canon itself. So, the Jews did disagree big time in the first century about which books go in their Bible. You just showed me that they had a different canon. That yes, doesn't... that's the point. The, the books that go into the Bible are different. And Again, it matters for they had the Septuagint during the Roman Empire and yeah. they had Ezra's canon during the time yeah. when they left Babylon. So when you say Jews but they, agreed, but in the first century, but you Jesus can't prove to, you can't Jews show disagreed. me. For example, where did they disagree though? Because, Having a different canon this, doesn't the, inherently the mean The Greek-speaking they... Jews tend uh -huh. to accept the Greek uh, books in Greek, like the Book of Wisdom. Mm -hmm. But those in Palestine tend to accept the, the shorter Hebrew Bible, which didn't include these extra bits. And still today, okay. if you look at a modern, uh, the Jews tend not to accept these uh, Greek books, they accept the Hebrew books in Hebrew. So Jews did disagree then, they disagree. No, I don't care about the Jews off. I don't care that, about the Jews off. I'm talking agree. about pride. During the times of Christ and prior to the time of Christ. The time of Christ, they, they didn't agree. I now, you and me, you and me. The Sorry? I, at the time of Jesus, in the first century, yes. diaspora Jews used the Greek translation, the others used the Hebrew, and there were different canons. Again, I'm going to say, having a different canon doesn't inherently mean that they disagree with each other on you know, the different books. By definition, it does, because the canon is in it, it doesn't. Again, I would say. It, are you aware of the epistle? He's a Christian. Are you aware of the epistle of Barnabas that that was in the Codex Sinaiticus? Yeah. Would you disagree? Do you disagree on the epistle of Barnabas? Like, because it was part of the Codex Sinaiticus. Yeah. Is it scripture? Would, would you consider it still scripture? So I think in order for it to be categorized as scripture, it has to meet like four criteria, right? It has to be used in some churches for instruction. It has to be like at least dated to be uh, within the first century for the New Testament Gospels. Also, New Testament uh, criteria. It has to be tied back. Sorry, oh yeah, sorry. It has to be tied back to a identifiable apostle from the apostolic age. So if those criteria, then you could match it on that grounds, but I don't think was it gonna be used for tutelage in any major church, I'm so. But it, was, it, was, it, was, yeah, but it was used because okay. it was part of the canon in the Codex Sinaiticus. Sure. Yeah, which, is fine, but, but then exactly. it, which church was it used in? Was like, well, well, no fine. church was used in because it was a yeah. canon for everyone, which was part of the Codex Sinaiticus. We have an expansive canon. Even, it's not exactly. limited to only Just because we have different, different, different churches in the early uh, centuries had different uh, books that accepted the scripture. Sure. For example, one Enoch was accepted in some, the Epistle of Barnabas was as well. Uh, the Didache, uh, the, I mean, the, 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 the list of the, uh, is not the, the, the list uh, uh, no, 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 Didache was accepted by some it's not scripture. scripture. It, it wasn't well. Okay. It's not I'm not going to debate here. Don't try that. Don't try that. Don't so, try that. Please, that. please don't lie to me because you also gave me some examples prior to this, but you wouldn't inherently show me the example. Like when, when him and me were talking to you, you gave us examples. For example, in Hebrews chapter 11, you said that it contradicts something in some. No, no, it's a mistranslation. A mistranslation. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't show me. So you didn't show. Oh, wait, 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 I'll show you. Oh, okay, show me. Go for it. Because you told me and that you I'm couldn't remember. Blind, linear. What are you at? It. From the Lord. Huh? It's going good. It's going good. Yeah. Open up the interlinear after that. Green fire. I just tried to uh, identify the uh, passage. Amen. From the Lord. So the Lord reigns something from the Lord. Is that not implying to us? Yeah, it's chapter 10. So it's Hebrews chapter 10. This is the NIV, which is an evangelical translation. Let's not you, let's, object to that. Yeah, let's not use the NIV. Yeah? Let's not use the NIV. Well, which translation would you like? 
Yeah, let me, uh, let me. No, just no, show me. Can, can I, can I, okay, NRSVC. N R C. The, 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 the Catholic edition. Oh, you're Roman Catholic? I'm not Roman Catholic. Why are you using Catholic translation? Because, because I've seen that it's, it's more accurate. Well, just use the NRSV. Okay. It doesn't have to be Catholic, just use the standard version. Because uh, I, I usually use that for the translation. There you are, Anglican. Not Anglican. Okay. Right. Yeah, this is fine. So this is uh, Hebrews chapter 10. So, I mean, this is, I don't know if you want to read this yourself, but therefore when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you desire, but a body you prepared for me. This is the incarnation, yeah? Uh, with burnt offerings and sin offerings you are not pleased. Then I said, here I am. It's written about me in the scroll. I have come to you to do my will. So this is about, this is an important point of Christian doctrine. Doctrine is being predicted, prophesied from the scriptures, um, and it is Psalm. See, see the footnote: Psalm 40, verses 6. See separate again. Okay, wait. Close so, it. Close so, it. So, wait, wait. Close it. Let me take a picture of it. Wait. Close it. Close it. What did I say? Uh, go up. Let me quickly change the translation to my. Can no, I? Can no, no, I? No, wait, no, wait, I'm wait, wait, my, I'm going to use my no, translation. But, I, no, wait, but why do I have to use your because translation? Because it's my special translation. This no, no, is can I use my translation, please? It's the NRS. Why don't you want to use my translation? Please, just let me. I know, I know, but I just want. It's the Catholic edition. But please, the Catholic edition. I know, but please, can I just use my translation? It's the one underneath that. I just the one underneath that. That's it. There we go. No difference. Thank you. I know there's no difference. I just want to use it just in case. Just in case. It's exactly the same as the one I've just quoted. I, I don't care. I just want to use. What we are, what we are. So, uh, so we've coming opened here, up. We're looking at. Uh, can you look up Psalm 40, verses Psalm 40. six and eight? In oh, your, in oh, a modern open up the inter, 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 in, in a modern Bible. No, 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 no. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm got a special. Open up the interlinear. He doesn't want to open up the interlinear. Well, look up. I just read. Like, I used to read changing. So my, my, wait, wait, the Bible's been used, so we have to use another. Can we can we use the interlinear, please? No, we're going to use a modern translation. No, no, I don't want to use a modern translation. I want to use the interlinear. You can research it yourself later. No, no, no. Can I please use the interlinear? I'm I'm going to refuse to read until you bring it. So what was it? Um, verse uh, by the Lord God and His Spirit. Yeah. Six to eight. So it's Psalm forty, verse six to eight. I'm going to refuse to believe until. And it says here, there we are. In sacrifice and offering, you have not delighted, but you have given me an we'll open ear. We'll read that Burnt offering and sin offering, you have not required. Okay. You see, it talks here of an ear, which is actually the Hebrew, but in the uh, the Greek translation quoted by the Hebrews, it has body. This is a mistranslation, well, well understood by scholars, of the Hebrew original by the Greek translation. You can pick any translation you like, it's exactly the same in all of them. Thank you. Can you open up the interlinear now, please. In oh, the interlinear. The Instead of a modern then, translation. Why? I, I just, why don't you look it up? Fine. You, I don't have data. I don't have data. Uh, so there's a whopping big uh, uh, error about Christian oh, yeah. in the New Testament. Improving a point of doctrine from the Old Testament doesn't actually exist. It's a really important point. Wait, 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 wait. Go back. Can I see interlinear? Is this the ELEC? Right? This is the King James Version, by the way. You're interlinear with KJV, you might want to have a, a modern translation. If you read, oh, God says it's up to you. I mean, it doesn't matter, it's the same. It will always be the same anyway. Psalm 40, verse 5. Oh, this is verse 6. It's actually verse it's verse, verse six, six to verse six, yeah, yeah. verse six, yeah. six to eight in the Septuagint. And we said it's not CV. It's like it doesn't remind me. Actually, excuse me, excuse me. Because it's one B. So, so hold on. In, the, in that verse, where you and the first and the last, there is there is no besides me. There is no God. So you would agree that Revelation presents. Is there a is there a English translation? Can you see the art? Well, well, excuse me, excuse me, yeah. Okay. So what does this change? So, so what, what, what is that? So what, the Septuagint has a body I have prepared for you. This is a reference to the incarnation. That's precisely why it's quoted. That's in the Greek, yeah. But it's a mistranslation of the original Hebrew, which doesn't have body. It has an ear. And again, it's a different, completely different form. No, re repeat, repeat that again. I don't understand. Okay. In the Greek translation, remember the New Testament doesn't quote from the Hebrew Bible normally. It quotes from a translation, the Greek translation, uh, called the Septuagint. Well, unless you, this is basic, this is basic stuff. 
Hebrew chapter 8, we can see that... You know, when Paul quotes in Scripture, what translation does he use? We can see that he also uses the Septuagint. He uses yeah, the Septuagint. Yeah, exactly, that's my point, the Greek translation. Okay. Yeah, we agree, we agree. The Greek translation. So, okay. when you look at the Greek, the Greek, it's, uh, the Greek translation, the Septuagint, translated into English, it talks about, in, in Psalm 40, uh, about a body that has been prepared. A it does say prepared. that. It's not, it's not a mistranslation. My point is, and this has been pointed out to me by Professor James Barr, Professor of Hebrew Bible at Oxford University, which is not my idea. I don't read Hebrew. I read Greek, by the way, but I don't read Hebrew. He says the original, as all modern translations of the Psalms will say, doesn't have a body. It says an ear. And it's a common mistranslation, a mistake you'd like to make if you didn't know Hebrew very well. Experts no, wait, can, can, I, wait, can you ask yeah? me to bring up, because I'd like to take but a the, picture But of the inspired well. Bible has because, done this. Because, you know, we, we also see other passages like Hebrews chapter 8, where we see Paul. Oh, yeah, could, could, could you quickly? Could, I'd like to take a picture of, of that. Because, you know, we also see in, this, uh, in Hebrews chapter 8, we yeah, see did you want to take Paul cross the interlinear. Yeah, 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 the interlinear. Oh, okay. You can you can check this out at home. I mean, it's it's uh, oh, sorry, sorry. in your own time as well. Because we see we see in Hebrews chapter eight, we see in Hebrews chapter eight, where Paul specifically prophesizes from. Thank you. So again, so we see specifically in Hebrews chapter 8 where Paul cross-references from a prophecy in Jeremiah chapter 31. If we read the Septuagint, we see it's completely accurate to what he said in Hebrews chapter 8, where he says that the Lord had left Israel. Right. But the Masoretic text, that, the Masoretic text says that he still stayed the husband to Israel. But that isn't coherent to what Paul said. But when we, when we look at the Septuagint, Fine. It's accurate, no, I, I but I'll, 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 have, I'll, have to, I'll have to look into that because I'll, I'll have to look it, it, into it, what you said. The, the because we also see about is how you're, yeah, yeah. how you're going to process this. Okay. Because uh, the, this is a real issue. If you're going to process it, like, it, like it, calling, it, you're wrong. Uh, how, I, I'm, I'm giving you some pastoral advice here. You may have, okay. uh, let's see if we can do it without getting sarcastic comments, not from you, but from someone else. When I was at university, when I was a student at uni studying the Bible in Greek. That's, song, what, I'm, that's what I'm going to do. Excellent. It was... Very challenging. I was a conservative Christian. I was actually, oh, you were, huh? I was actually an evangelical Christian at the time, oh, really? and then I became a Roman Catholic yeah. later. Awesome. Anyway, I came across things like this, you know, in an academic setting, and I had to process them. Uh -huh. This is going to be a challenge for you. It's a okay. challenge of people of faith. Right? Okay. And I'm just saying, be prepared. Know what you're going to get yourself into, because it okay. will rock you if right. you're not prepared. Okay. It okay. will rock you like nothing down here will rock so, you. Well, so that's all I'm, I'm saying. Because I, 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 went, I, went, I, I, I went, I went, through I went, I went through this. I went through this process. Well, See, saying, saying, I knew you started mocking. You left so, Islam six times. <laughs> so if if, uh, if you're I'll, I'll move on now. Nice talking to you. What's your name? Manuel. Nice to talk to you, Manuel. What's your name? What's your name? Paul. Paul. Cheers, man. Thank you. I mean, look. Very simply, if, if, if your faith will be rocked and then you will leave Christianity, why has he left Islam six times? He left Islam six, six times. times. Is it? Yeah, he, the, the first time wow. he left, he said that, that the Quran says it is easy to follow. But he didn't find Islam easy to follow, so the Quran was wrong. <laughs> uh, he, he also uh, says. He said it in, in, in an interview. Uh, he also said that Paul misquotes oh, everything yeah. from the Septuagint. But we see in that Hebrews chapter misquotes. 8. Uh, <laughs> we see it. We see in Hebrews chapter 8, that is in like many other, many other cross-references that Paul brings. One example I can bring is Hebrews chapter 8, where he cross-references Jeremiah uh, chapter 31, verse 31 to 32. It's directly to what the Septuagint says. But when we compare it to the Masoretic text, it's not. Because the Masoretic text has unfortunately been mistranslated or on purpose by the Jews. I, I, I could say that, I could you say that. You can make the argument. Now, just, yeah. just tomorrow, well, just tomorrow makes it before the, the text is actually there, but just yeah. makes the argument anyway. You can make the but yeah, he, he, I also asked him to bring me the examples where he said that in, uh, he, he, also brought, he also brought me some other examples prior to this, when, when the camera came and everything. I asked him, could you show me, could you show me this? Could you show me where, where you're getting this example from? Could you show me the cross-reference and how it's wrong? He wouldn't bring it. Paul just makes up some things that I think yeah. is a poor debate style. For example, if, if, like if the, exact, solid, yeah, the exact book that he said here that you yeah. said that wasn't part of script, that wasn't yeah, scripture. Yeah, he said the Didacchio was yeah, part of exactly. No, it's not. No, exactly. it's not. It's more of an instruction manual than anything. Oh yeah, you know, bro, we're going to pray for you, okay? I asked him. Paul, we're going to pray for you. 
So I, I also asked him to bring me, to show me, like, I wanted to use my translation. But he, for some reason, he was... Pray for Paul. He was... I'll pray for you. How, do I, how, how should I put it in words? He was, like, scared to bring the translation that I wanted. But then finally, in the end, I took the phone from him. I brought the translation that I wanted. And then after I... He wanted to go to the modern translation instead of going to the interlinear first. So we went to the modern translation. Okay, yes, the Masoretic text says that. But then the interlinear says another thing which is accurate to what Paul says and to what he cross-references. So again, he also states that, oh, just because we have different canons means that we, ag we disagree on the other books that are in different canons. No, just because there are different books in different canons doesn't mean we disagree on the other books in the different canons. We still agree on the books. For example, the Epistle of Barnabas. I have nothing wrong with the Epistle of Barnabas, even though, it's part of the, even though it was in the canon of the Codex Sinaiticus and it's not in the canon today, I would still use it, no doubt. There is no problem with it. For example, you have many Protestants out there who would say it's apocrypha, that, it, that it's not divinely inspired. But if you actually read it, there is nothing wrong with it. So all his points, his points were invalid. He tried lying to me and he wouldn't even bring me the examples that he wanted to show me and try to disprove Paul and saying that the Masoretic text and both the Septuagint are, are, are not God brief scripture. I also asked him to define infallible for me. He wouldn't, he wouldn't define it. I asked him, where, when, he, when he brought up the verse, when Paul said that every scripture is God breathed, he was telling me that doesn't inherently mean that it's infallible. Well, yes, it does. What else can it mean? No Christian, no Christian debates about that verse. When I told him that, then he tried to, tried to divert from, from, from that. So overall, the man is disingenuous. He is, as David said, he's left Islam six times. That's crazy. Being disingenuous is crazy. But yeah, overall, I wish people someday would understand the dishonesty of Islam and would see that just because we have different canons, just because, uh, he, he, oh yeah, <laughs> another funny thing. He also pointed out because Moses lived from 3000 BC and there is a massive, massive gap to the Dead Sea Scrolls around 300 BC to 200 BC, somewhere around there when the Dead Sea Scrolls date back to it. Just because there is a massive gap doesn't mean, <laughs> doesn't inherently mean that the, the, the scriptures have been corrupted. Because then I can beg the question of asking them, okay, I'll, okay, you know what? I'll give him, I'll give him the point. I'll tell, I'll give him the premise that yes, say if it has been corrupted, then tell me, why should I rely on the Quran then? Why is the Quran reliable? The Quran, the Quran doesn't have any historical basis before Muhammad. So why should I rely on the Quran? And yeah, the man is just disingenuous. That, that's really it. But <laughs> overall me, uh, I'm not really good at articulating my arguments really well. I stutter a lot and I hope to get well with my arguments soon. And yeah. Good effort. You debated a season debate or something. Thank you, thank you.